Welcome to the Growing Next Door. You're listening to my mommy and daddy. But now my main area of expertise is、um, canines, dogs, to the layperson. I am your co-host, Chris Green, and I'm Sarah Green. Have a petastic week. And remember, folks, life is short. Play with your pet. Okay, guys, go in my bedtime. And now our feature presentation. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. <laughs> my master made me this collar. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this collar so that I may talk. Squirrel. Hi, pups and kittens, and welcome to our first episode of a mini series that we are going to be doing for YouTube of the Groomer Next Door. I'm your co-host Chris Green. Sitting next to me is the fabulous Sarah. Hello. Well, let's get started.、Um, we are going to be narrating the video that we shot, and of course, as we do it, it's going to be one of those first time, first episode kind of things. Uh, we'd like to thank the owners of Princess for allowing us to actually shoot this video.、Um, as you can tell from the beginning of the shot, this is Princess in the tub. We just want to kind of give everybody an idea. This is what we do every day. Yeah,、uh, Princess、uh, was an actual stray that、uh, she found wandering the streets or the backwoods area.、Um, I remember the first time she came in to tell me about Princess. Um, back then, Princess was about four times this length.、Um, she was just a baby,、um, but we tried our hardest to keep it all nice and long, and the mom did too. But、um, we ended up having to take it down because the mother、um, just couldn't take care of all that hair. Great Pyrenees are known to have super thick, super dense hair to keep themselves warm when they're out doing what they're supposed to do, like herding sheep. Um, Chris found on online a bunch of other stuff that we, yeah. You know. we'll, we'll talk about it as <laughs> as the show goes on. But、um, right now,、um, as you're、uh, rinsing, getting the first layer of water on, you notice that her hair isn't very long. Her tail is super long, as you can tell. That's typically the length of the body as well. But she was cut down、um, a little bit ago before this bath. And as you can tell, she's a really well-behaved dog. She's prepared for everything. <laughs> Um, You're welcome for that. <laughs> yes, you did a lot of work with her. <laughs> I trained her to sit still and do all this other stuff.、Um, she's not very good with commands. She's <clears throat> she has to be babied the entire time, which is fine for us.、Um, we'll do whatever she needs if she needs to be, you know, baby talked or a stern voice, which some dogs are just fine with.、Um, so. As you can tell, right now I'm putting、um, hypoallergenic,、uh, tearless. tearless shampoo on her.、Um, as you can tell, we're making sure that. Her head is completely submerged. Make sure that you get her her head nice and rinsed. First thing that everybody should notice when you pick up a dog from a groomer is that the dog should smell good. And the first place you go is the face. The face. Everybody, when they pick up their dog, the first thing they do is that they just bury their face into the dog's face, unless they're right. <laughs> okay. One thing that we just saw was Chris pick up a towel and wipe off the face a little bit. The importance to that is that you don't want dirt and debris in between their eyes. So by taking the towel there, it's not taking off the shampoo, but what it is doing is removing the excess debris to cause eye irritation. Every groomer should do that. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. And then what are you doing now? Well, right now I'm actually putting.、Um, it is a degreaser that is going on to Princess. This will actually help take off. All of the actual、um, oils that were corroded into the pores and everywhere else, it putting it on the ears, put it on the body, making sure to rub it in, make sure. As you can tell by her look, as you can see right now, she's enjoying it.、Um, <laughs> it's a spa treatment for for the dogs, and as you can tell, we're very very、um, liberal with it. We want to make sure that the dog is fully submerged so that she is going to be nice and rinsed. You're going to see nice and clean. Nice、yeah. and clean. Thank you. Um, I'm, as I'm watching this, it, it's kind of weird to actually <laughs> record. So you know, be 
I, I remember doing this just a couple days ago. <laughs> See, it's important for this process to happen while being in the grooming area is that when she's going to get a full cut body cut after the wash and blow dry. So I need to make sure my blades and clippers can go straight through the hair without getting clogged up through oil and grease. Every large dog, every double coated dog, just like Princess here, has to have their oils. They need their oils. It's just so important for them to have their natural oils in the skin. So you don't do this on a regular basis. Right. Um, this is not Princess, a... If you come in every week, you would never do this every right. week. Um, Princess comes to see me every six to eight weeks, depending on when she actually needs it. Um, so every six to eight weeks to have degreaser is not a big deal. It's actually rather good to get the irritation of the oils that are holding on to the dirt off. And if you noticed, one of the spots that I noticed that she was really um, in need was her chest. And she had some on her belly that you could just feel that oily feeling. So I wanted to make sure I actually focused on it. Now we're going to move on to actual shampoo, which that's what this stage is. This is what we're always talking about. This is where the actual oxygen, the water, everything, the shampoo mix together. Yeah, and you're using a, a proportioner system that... Um, is handheld mm -hmm. and what it does it puts like you said the water the oxygen and the shampoo under pressure and gets underneath and releases some more debris um, and as you're doing it at the same time instead of wasting water and making the bath go longer you're just putting the shampoo on top of the degreaser letting the shampoo just kind of rinse the degreaser off right um, as you can tell, the actual wand itself is pressed to skin, so that way I'm actually going from skin up, so that way we're getting the full body, not just getting the top of it, making sure that I get as far into this dog as possible. As you can tell, she was absolutely wonderful. Just barely touch her belly, and she knew exactly when to stand. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Um, now, <laughs> if, you have, uh, uh, if you're paying attention to this, as you can tell, I'm only doing half of the body right now. Yes. Because I've only done half the body with the degreaser as well. So I'm focusing on just half and making sure to go all over that body. I want to make sure that I get the entire body. I don't want anything to be left behind. Exactly. You know, when you're doing the wash part, you don't have to worry about the other side staying um, clean because it hasn't been washed yet. So instead of moving the dog left, right, left, right, left, right the entire time, during the washing process and the rinsing process. This way you put all the shampoo on the one side, get it all taken care of, then flip her to the other side and just move her nice and easy over. Well, you're getting ahead of yourself. Now, now, now no, people, just... people aren't getting ready. They're going to say, wait, you're going to turn the dog? <laughs> but I'm saying is that this is important to make sure that the soap gets thorough on the one side before we start moving over to the other side. And as you can tell, I'm making sure just because I put a degreaser on the tail doesn't mean I'm not going to put shampoo on the tail as well. As you can tell, I did that as well. I, I'm always afraid that other people wouldn't take the kind of time that is going into it. I mean, we're already seven and a half minutes into this actual bath, and I've only done half the body. Yeah. You know, that's that's the level of I want everybody to take out of this. Is This dog, it's getting a full spa treatment. It's not just getting a quick little bit of water. It's getting a full bath. Okay. That's one thing that we've been stressing the entire time about doing these baths. They are not something that you can rush through. That's why we decided, you know what, we're going to actually go through it. And as you can tell, I also put the shampoo on the ears. Not on the inside of the ears, folks. I put it on the outside of the a layer of the skin. I want to make sure that the actual ears are clean as well. The degreaser should not be the only thing I'm using on the ears as well. Right. Um... Now, the importance to the greaser, too, is to get all the oils off the skin in order for the shampoo to do its job and to condition it the skin. And right now, you're following up with the slicker brush. A slicker brush is a pretty standard brush for every groomer. Every groomer owns one. It's got bent bristles that helps straighten out the hair. Normally, you don't want to use it on a wet dog because it will, it can. <laughs> a big old nose. <laughs> <laughs> Prince is like, what's that on your head? She, actually, all the dogs <laughs> when we were filming, all dogs were just like, what are you wearing? And why is it blinking? So, uh, the slicker brush on a thoroughly sudsy dog 
can glide right through. And it also helps remove even more debris, um, excess hair that is already about ready to fall off and the thicker, denser areas. And it's not being done very uh, firmly. Mm-hmm. Because if you start doing it firmly, you're going to re- uh, slicker burn the yep. dog. And you don't want that. It's so easy to do. A lot of newbies end up doing that. It's something to learn, but neither one of us are newbies. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is a little weird sitting here. You're actually watching my work. And you know what? I've said it before. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm the first one to say, Sarah, I'm intimidated by your work. I always have been. Oh, and there's it, the flip. Oh, there's that flip. <laughs> and as you can tell, do it with ease. Don't yank the dog. Don't pull the dog. Because another thing you got to look at at the bottom, um, what she's standing on. She's standing on a grate. Mm-hmm. So all the soap and debris falls underneath and drains out. So you can't move the dog quickly because the toe can get stuck mm-hmm. and it can pop a nail off. It can, you know, even break a toe. Yeah, I was going to say break a toe. That's always my biggest thing I'm always worried about. Um, at every grooming salon, uh, other than one that I've worked at, um, has always had grates. So that's pretty standard in grooming salons. Uh, the one salon that I worked at over at Carol, she didn't have a grate. She had just a regular tub. And then her husband built a platform to bring them up. And then we had uh, this weird um, squishy thing to go on top, kind of like a bath mat. So the dogs never had a chance to get their toes stuck anywhere. Um, but with proper technique, I have nothing to worry about. And as you can tell, I have now finished the degreasing process. Now, it is not a... I just put a little bit on there. That is a four bottle regimen that I've actually used, making sure that that will actually do its job completely. I want to make sure my hands are rinsed because I don't want any of that on my hands. I want to make sure I keep my hands as clean as possible. She was absolutely a doll. And, and, yeah. and, and it's funny is that this was not the first video I had shot in, consens- in, in, in a concession. It was probably, she was, I think she was my fourth dog of the series because we have right now we have about a five episode series it probably will go more because this is the first one that you guys are are being able to watch um but it was she was just absolutely adult when i always say i enjoy my day i enjoy my job this is what i'm talking about this is i I kind of i miss bathing dogs yeah i bet um every once in a while i'll have a chance of bathing my own dog um chris normally takes care of that i was gonna say when was that (laughs) <laughs> I did it Friday. I bathed my own dog Friday. Oh, oh, your own dog. I thought you meant like <laughs> no, our dogs. No, not my personal, our personal dogs. But um, it when you have a good dog like Princess, um, washing can be so, so nice and therapeutic for a groomer. Yeah, your hands get wet and they get chapped and or they get uh, cracked and dried Dry. out. But it's just something soothing. And if you can take from bathing a dog and you can feel soothed yourself, your energy is passed along to the dog. And, you know, you can put some... I put an iPod on. Um, you listen to music. Actually, I listen to... Mostly I listen to podcasts. I mean, look, we may record podcasts and we may, you know, be part of that, that scene. That doesn't mean that I don't listen to it myself. I mean, I love listening to podcasts. And so probably at this point, I'm probably listening to some show at the time of doing it. Now... You may be wondering, well, why is there not audio from the actual time of being in there? All there is is audible sound. You wouldn't want to hear it because there's nothing fun. But, you know, it, it's one of those things. Plus, I have a pod, I have my podcast on. So if I am talking to the dog, you'll, you'll see it occasionally. You'll see me talking. Well, you won't see me talking. But you'll see the dog <laughs> reacting to me talking. Um, so as you're giving your good vibes to the dog, they tend to relax. Now... This is not typical. Uh, there are a <laughs> lot of dogs this that, isn't typical, no. that are very difficult to groom. Oh, look at that nose. Um, at that point, I know I had said something, you know, like, you're so pretty. Who's my, who's my pretty princess? <laughs> I know, because she'll look at me. She gives me those looks. And, and mo- some of you will look at that and go, I didn't see a look. So, no, no. She's giving me a look of, oh, I know I'm pretty. <laughs> see, what's funny with prince princess is that she has a brother. Yes. Her brother's name is Prince. And Prince is a poodle that her mom rescued. 
And Prince, he is a firecracker. He, ah. I mean, he's good, but boy, he wants his attention when he wants it. And he ended up looking, he always looks really cute. He's got a, a little mustache for a poodle. Yep. <laughs> so it's quite entertaining to see Princess and Prince uh, mingle because oh, of... Oh, there, there I had no choice. Had to give her a kiss. <laughs> Couldn't help it. So she's got a little brother, and it's a poodle, and his name Prince. Now you're starting the ro- the rinsing process, which is intense. It's intense, but it has. this is the vital time. This is where it really becomes imperative that you rinse, rinse, rinse. As as you used to say, rinse, rinse, rinse. Um, so you, you think the dog's rinsed, then rinse some more. Exactly. Um, one thing I do admit that when I first started grooming, I didn't think you know rinsing was such a big ordeal. Mm-hmm. You had to rinse until there was no suds left. <coughs> and and well, you can always tell where oh, sometimes sorry. sometimes you know I I usually will take two different ways on the rinsing. I will actually use Carol's method. Well, that you exactly. Taught me. That's what I was going to yeah, head I know, into I know until I going. start choking on myself. Um, so when I got to Missouri and uh, <clears throat> started getting hired on to Carol's, which a funny story is, is that I called Shadowwood first, <laughs> and you know I knew that um, Keith knew my parents, and um, so I called there. Well, I don't know who I got. I don't remember who I spoke to. But they said they weren't hiring at the time. So I called Carol's. And I had a job the first week I showed up to Missouri. Yeah, you were you were already already employed. <clears throat> we literally pulled into town. You went, I think the day that, the second day we got into Missouri. You went and we drove over. I sat in the car, which I thought was weird. I did a little walk there and I yeah. started the next week. Yep. So Carol had me do a dog and she looked at me and she goes, no. no there's, there's some things you need to change here. And I kind of took it personally because over at the salon that I had out in California, I had the second largest clientele that if the person, Jeff, was busy. Yeah, my name yeah. My name Jeff. It's Hefe. <laughs> uh, if he was too booked, um, the dogs would come to me. And so here I am thinking, I had the second largest clientele. I was sent to many different salons to get them up and running and or fix from being so screwed up and you're telling me i have something wrong with my grooming well i have to say i'm thankful for carol because one thing she did teach me was that rinse 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 once you think the dog's rinsed rinse some more um don't be cheap and stingy with the water not to interrupt you i want to actually mention this Um, as you can tell what i'm doing around the ears i'm actually pinching the ear canal I want to make sure no water gets into the actual ear canal because that could cause ear infection. And if you notice, the actual pressure on my my water is very little. I don't want to drown the dog. I want to make sure it's either on a mist or just a very fine amount so that I actually can make sure I get her nice and and cleaned off and make sure there's no soap left. But I want to make sure that it's nothing to pressure. I don't want her to to actually have that reaction. You can see I'm, I'm continuously switching my actual nozzle. So I want to make sure that she has, you know, a comfortable uh, pressure that's going on her. As you can see right now, she's not moving. You can tell she's not moving. So she's not uncomfortable. I'm making sure that there's nothing that's going to make her feel uncomfortable. But she's doing it. It looks like you have the mist setting on right now. What we have is just a typical garden hose that you would use out in your yard. And it's got like jet, full, cone, flat shower mist and full mm-hmm. uh, right now you're using the mist one which is what you would use on your delicate flowers um your delicate plants you just want just a little bit of water you don't want to hurt the petals or anything so that's what we're doing right now <clears throat> or you are <laughs> and as by pinching the ear canal it helps reduce the amount of water that goes anywhere near the ear and then you flatten it out put your thumb in the ear canal and go further um, it's important after you get your dog washed, especially if you're going to do it at home, is follow up with a Q-tip or not, excuse me, cotton ball. Yeah. Not a Q-tip, a cotton ball. 
Um, put the cotton ball in the ear canal and rub the ear a little bit. It helps soak up any water that you might have gotten into the ear canal. But one thing we, that I want to actually point out. Now, <clears throat> obviously you guys are watching this video all over the world. Which is still amazing to me. Um, but as you're watching this, this gives you an idea of just their... Couldn't help it. I just, I, I can't help but, you know, give kisses to dogs. I don't care if you're wet or not. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's all the same to me. I just, ah. But here's where I want you to understand. Yes, do it. Washing your dog at home, it's great. It's a great idea. It gives you a bonding experience. As you can tell, I just switched the dog around again. But as you can tell, we're now almost 20 minutes into this bath. 20 minutes. And... If you have that kind of time that you can put into it, that's great. But when you're actually going to a groomer, a lot of people have this this thought of, I'm going to go and wash my dog. I'm going to save the $20, $25. Yeah, it, it, it understandably, you know, $20, $25, bucks, you know, it's a good savings. But look at the time that's going into this dog. If you have a dog and you need to give it a bath, you may not have that kind of time. That's where groomers actually really do benefit the idea of doing all this stuff. It's not really, we're not making a, a lot of money for doing this kind of bath. We're not really, you know, you're not racking it in, obviously. You know, if you, if you look at it, it, to wash this dog without the shampoo, just talking about water, not shampoo. Yeah. It takes about four gallons of just shampoo. Yep. And most, um, gallons are about two two dollars at RMU charges two to three dollars a gallon yeah something like of that. water like usage that. well then <clears throat> you got to add in um, the gallon of degreaser about a gallon of degreaser maybe half a gallon of degreaser that you use four bottles I don't know what that would probably about to. half gallon or so and then you got to worry about the rinsing process and obviously we are using a heck of a lot more than four gallons to rinse. And if you notice, I'm even doing the inside of legs. I think a lot of times that may be overlooked by some people. Because that inside of legs, that water and soap that I had put in there, that's going down those legs. That could be overlooked if you're in a rush. Right. Um, the other salons that I try to help um, get better from their lack of control. Um, quality control. Quality control. Dogs are coming back itching in their crotch area. Oh. Gosh. They were itching under their armpits, yep. and they're itching underneath their tail. And those are places that are mostly missed. They think that the water running down is going to be enough. Yeah, no, that's not. the dog's going to feel a little uncomfortable. You, you lower the setting so it's not high pressure, like um, a, a stream or anything. Um, more just like a regular shower. And you got a cup around the... Hole and and right rinse. now, right now, I'm looking at my watch. It's almost 22 minutes that this bath is gone. Now I've checked to make sure I see no soap at all. Now it's time to dry the dog. Now, here's the thing: I'm not just going to simply do a little bit. I'm going to towel dry, make sure that she has nice, you know, at least a little bit of dry. I'm not because I still have a lot more work to be done. That's one thing you and I differ. I, on a Pyrenees like her. I would have used about four towels on her. Yeah. Four to five towels on her. Um, I do a heck of a lot more towel drying. Um, right now, that's just a typical beach towel. But I typically take two towels, two beach towels, since she is so wide around, and strap it around her midsection and tuck it in. Kind of like a um, Like a jacket a sweatshirt. Yeah. yeah. And then <clears throat> I use... Uh, Two towels, one for the front two legs and one for the back two legs. And I'm talking about fluffy towels. And then I take another towel used for the uh, the tail and the head. Obviously head first, then tail. Yeah, we, we do <laughs> defer. See, this is where I want you guys to understand that Sarah's and my methods are not 100% the same. All right, so we're going to move on to drying at this point. Um, I've already taken Princess out of the tub. Now I want to show there's a couple things I'm going to need. This is the hoodie that I will put on her. It's a hoodie that helps soak up water around the ears. And it also helps with um, muffling the sound of the dryer. Since the dryers do get kind of loud. <laughs> I couldn't help it. But this is that time where I was like, I just couldn't help it. Shake her because she kind of hands me her paw. <laughs> and I just couldn't help it. I just, just love that dog. I do love her. 
Now, he's using our largest high-velocity dryer. It's a canine dryer. It's got two motors. It's loud, and it is powerful. So you cannot use it full strength on the head. No. It will cause... No. So it can cause eye damage. Yes. It can cause inner ear damage. It can cause even gum and breathing problems if you use it around the, the mouth. Now, another thing I do um, a little differently is that I attack the legs first. I dry off the legs first. Uh, it seems like the dogs are easier dried off once the legs are done first. And see, I always like to do the body first because I know that water will seep downward. So they'll actually already attack the legs again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, this is where we, you know, we're both individuals. We both do this every day. I like the fact that we both have different kinds of methods. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes this thing whole, this, <clears throat> this whole situation, this is what makes it great. Because my methods might not be the same as your methods. At the end result, though, that's we what we, same. we get the same. So I don't really... I, I don't I, I want to be like you I do but I also have to have my own kind of way of doing things right and whatever works for you might not work for me but we get the yeah. job done and the quality is the same now blow drying a dog is the hardest process for the dogs uh, washing eh, they don't like water that's fine they might be stiff legged but drying can be the most stressful most of the time when dogs come into grooming salons, they're shaking, they're shivering. It's not because they're cold. They have some worries. Oh, of course. And one of the worries is the blow drying. Once the blow drying is over with, groomers see a completely different side of the dog. Once they get all that dirt and debris off of them, they feel lighter, they feel fluffier, they can move easier. And <clears throat> then they come to life. And they're just all of a sudden very happy. That's why when you pick up, the dog is so excited. They're not shaking anymore. Right. It's the anticipation of the blow drying. But as you can tell, mm -hmm. like if you look at this process, Princess is sitting still. There's no erratic movement, so she's not afraid of what's going on. That's the first thing you really need to see. And lot, you know, of course, you really don't see these types of videos out there. That's what makes this kind of unique. And I wanted to show everybody this is why we're doing this mini series of different dogs, different uh, baths, different things that we're going through is this is what we do every day. Countless amounts of dogs. This is what we are. This is our Monday through Friday, you know, all that. I just, <laughs> I just cannot. That, you see, that's the other thing about what I'm doing in this job. Yes, we work, but I do play with dogs and I love them so much. And you can see, look at this dog. There's obvious you know, she's just enjoying herself. There is no, 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 I'm going to get away. I'm going. Nope. See, another thing you got to worry about with Great Pyrenees is, is that the first thing that goes out on them are their hips. Yes. They are notorious to having bad hips. Princess is only a couple years old. She may be three. Um, and we still have to be careful her hips because her hips aren't very strong. Uh, <clears throat> so when you're blow drying a Great Pyrenees, you want to make sure you don't go over their kneecap close with the high velocity blow dryer like this one because you can move things out of place with this high velocity um if you put the high velocity up to your forearm it makes an indention a circle indention so you got to be careful you cannot you know mistreat the power of this blow dryer um and what's also great about this blow dryer it's not an actual heated blow dryer it naturally heats up through the motor. Right. Uh, so you got to make sure you regulate the temperature. If it's starting getting hot to you, you need to turn it off. And um, luckily, I what you don't see, I'm on the outside, closer to the door leading out to our uh, our outdoor pin where we can let the dogs out to go potty. I'm opening that door and letting the cool air come in from, you know, obviously it's winter. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment it is, but who knows when you're watching this. <laughs> right. And, and, and it's 2015. It could be who knows what year you're watching it now. So we're letting cool air come in and circulate through the bathing room because we don't want to get it hot. And then when the summer hits, we have a fantastic air conditioner <laughs> in there that cranks out some cool air. So we always got to keep in mind what is warm to us is hot to them. You know, their, their temperature is completely different from us. And another thing I want to always do with the dogs is 
I want to go around the dogs. I want to be able to do as little movement of them as I have to. If I have to move them, I have to move them. But I want this to be this nice spa type <coughs> relaxing experience. I mean, you can well, see this dog hasn't moved an inch since I started. Well, that's the difference between some groomers too. Yeah. Some groomers think they're here for me. They need to do what I say and I don't want to be put out. And that's but wrong. You and I are different. Yes. We bend, we move to the dog cuz sometimes it's just easier for the dog to stay right where it's at and us bend than it is to get them in the perfect position and then lose that perfect position. And I want you to pay attention to one thing here. I'm sitting on the floor. Yes. I'm not in a chair. I'm actually going to the dog's level. Now, obviously, I'm a tall guy, so that's why the shot is so high. <laughs> but I'm sitting on the floor. And that's fine. I'm totally okay on the floor. It's easier on the dog. So, <clears throat> okay. I want to make sure this dog is completely comfortable. Obviously, we've worked together a few times. Quite a few times. So she knows what to expect. In another video, we'll have dogs that we've never had before um, with different needs, different um, different things that we need to do, and we'll discuss that in another episode. But, you know, this is a dog that we see all the time. Upcoming episodes, we'll have our own dogs in there, which, you know, the style that I do with our dogs is different than I'm going to do with this dog. Every dog will be different in some way. And that's the other part. You have to be able to contour to the dog. And if you've noticed, too, a uh, princess is tethered to the wall. Yes. And it's on a slip lead, so it can loosen up when she's just sitting there. Um, so there's nothing really tying tight against her throat. No. Now, if she were to get up and try to make a beeline for something, say another dog comes in and she just so happens to be dog aggressive... Or they are dog aggressive too. Or the dog that comes by is dog aggressive because we got to put our dogs in the kennel when they come in for being groomed. Um, this way, we keep them secure. But yet still safe enough to where they don't feel like they're being restricted. Well, yeah, you can see her head movement. She just turned when I when I was working with uh, with her right now. She just turned her head all the way. She, can, she has full range of movement. And that's what, what makes it nice. She's just... Okay. <laughs> and the mat that you're using on the floor helps keep um, water from going back up onto the dog. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a lose losing battle if you're drying them somewhere where it's oh. not going to soak up the water and they're just going to get right back on. It's so annoying. It really is. It can be it can be a real challenge. Um, I've tried towels before. It works, but not as well. I like this mat. This is what I, I prefer over everything else. And as you can tell, it's been used so much, we need to get a new one. Yeah, it's definitely time. Um, now, I'm going to actually give you some facts about the Great Pyrenees. Um, if you were actually to go to a dog show, this dog would be in the working dogs cl uh, group. The height of these dogs ranges from 2 feet 1 inch to 2 feet 8 inches tall at the shoulder. The weight of these dogs generally are between 85 to 160 pounds. Lifespan of these dogs, if you're ever thinking about actually having a dog like this, is about 10 to 12 years. Like Sarah said, you know, obviously hips are a big deal. Um, so the way we always we always say this, if you, if you have actually heard our show before, you'll know nutrition is key to everything. Um, so that's a big deal. Now. now I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have so much to go on. I, I was I was recording this in my head as I was filming. So go on. Well, I just wanted to say, in order for a Great Pyrenees to be one of the number one things that can get you disqualified or someone say, oh, no, your dog's not purebred, is that on the back legs, there are two dew claws per foot. And they're right next to each other. And you can kind of see them right now. The big old bulge on the inner part of the foot. Yep. Uh, there's two nail and two nails, they're fully developed. They have everything they're supposed to need to have in order to consider it's a Great Pyrenees. If those two dew claws aren't there, um, if you're picking up a Great Pyrenees and they're saying, oh yeah, it's paper, this is a great quality of breed, take a look. Make sure, see, those two big old chunks of hair <laughs> have two dew claws. You got to make sure they are intact. 
Now, another thing. You noticed I focused a lot on the rump. Because what's a dog going to do when it gets in the kennel? It's going to sit. And that, if you don't make sure you covered that, guess what's going to happen? It's not going to dry. The other thing, as you noticed, I like to cover is I like to cover that inside of the leg. Here we go, talking about the inside of the legs again. I rinsed them. I washed them. If I don't make sure to dry them, again, it's going to just stay wet. It's going to consume. And then, of course, the underbelly will then remain wet. It's it's just one of those things. It and, continues to go. And another thing, if that belly doesn't stay dry, um, you know, obviously Princess is a female. You can get bacteria built up there and eventually get a horrible, nasty skin infection. Um, it could be a yeast skin infection. It could be all sorts of things. And then your dog's chewing at it and chewing at it and it just becomes terrible to deal with. And then now you're blow drying the front legs. Now the front legs are super dense. Normally I like to keep them brushed out so you can still see, you know, some feathers coming off the back of the front legs. But the mom said that it just gets too thick and too matted. We don't want to shave them. So I keep those cut down. Um, she normally gets what I call a number zero guard comb cut. And it helps her mom be able to see the skin. Uh, keep it brushed out so she doesn't have any skin problems. Most Great Pyrenees, though, don't get this treatment. That is true. And if you, you know, you can look right now. You can see the consistency of dry. I mean, we're, we're shooting a very high-def camera. So you can pretty much see everything. That's that's dry. You know, obviously you're going to have a little bit of, of damp because it's still out of the tub. But now we're going to go for the next process. Let's make sure that we actually turn her. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go and reach over her because that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And of course now I'm gonna have to try to get up and get her out of here because, yeah. <laughs> of course, like always, it's it's not the easiest. She's like, are we gonna are we done? She's are like, done? I'm done, right? Done? I'm done. <laughs> I think actually there's a part now I'm pretty much talking to her. And she's just so adorable. But um. <clears throat> uh, we also... I, th I think that that drink actually causes you more problems than anything else. <laughs> you caught me in it. Oh, yeah, I did. Hey, look at that. I didn't even know you were there. <laughs> and then there's Keith. It is always consistent where we have people coming in. Is that Keith? Yeah. yeah I guess it was Keith. Yeah, you He right. was rinsing off the thing that he was going to use ah. to stain our floors out front, so we got really nice floors. Pretty While profile. this is going on, we are in the middle of the remodel. The first thing that got done during our remodel at Shadowwood was our bathing room. Our bathing room is now where the small breed used to stay. And now the small breed is our bathing room. And it's going to have really pretty cottages all lined up, all nice and neat. Have their own little personal gate and a play area up front for them. It's going to be real nice. So um, <clears throat> he was getting the stain ready to get the floor done. So our uh, retail area. <laughs> She's so adorable. Look at that face. Oh man, I I can I can remember. Yep, I can't. I can remember just talking to her, having a great time. I I I just spend my. This is where I spend my day, folks. If you wonder what my office looks like, this is my office. And as he's doing the bathing on the first dog or first two dogs, I end up go and uh, do prep work on any dogs that he needs to get to later. Um, call customers. Talk to Keith. You might be grooming. Huh? You or, could be grooming as or well. Or grooming. I think I was going to get a dog at that I point. I think so. But, you know, that's Yeah, what... I was grabbing prints. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Because yeah, you're, yeah. you're almost halfway or over halfway through with the blow drying, and I grabbed prints. So then when she got into the kennel, I would be halfway done with prints, and that means I'll have 30 minutes left with prints. I gave her 30 minutes to dry in the kennel. And it, as you can tell, you know, I really want to be as detailed as possible with her dry. It's the same thing with the bath. I want to make sure I'm as detailed as possible. I can just tell. I, I can tell because I was there, obviously. But I remember just talking and talking and talking to the princess. Again, doesn't change from any other dog. This is what it looks like with every dog, pretty much. The only thing that would make this all absolutely ideal and perfect is if our blow dryers were off the floors. Yeah. We are in process of finding hooks to hold our blow dryers up off the floor. Um, keeps it away from the dogs. It helps keep the hair out from the motors and everything like that, too. So eventually you might see later on, if we ever do another 
Well, we uh, got we got four, but they've all been shot like this. But if we do another one, say the Zagar and Nufi. That's hoping... the one. Oh boy, don't even start me. If you've listened to the podcast, <laughs> you probably already heard that story. Whatever. <laughs> They'll be up on the wall, and um, all the cores will be up, and it's just safer in general. But uh, for now, we had to work with what we had because we are in the middle of the remodel and progress still has to be made. Yep. And as you can tell, I'm not going erratic. You know, I don't want to. I don't want her scared. Now, our dog kind of likes it fast, but it's it's a weird thing. I think it more or less uh, scratches her body. She likes that. This one, you know, with most of the dogs, you want to go slow. You want to go slow. the The biggest thing I can honestly say is this is not a race. You're not hurrying to get this dog done. You want to make sure you're taking your time. For one, your customer is paying you to do the job. So it doesn't matter if you, if you do five minutes worth of bath and five minutes of dry, you're really not giving your customer what they're paying for. Yeah, you're, you're cheapening out yeah. on them. And it's not right. You're stealing from them. Yeah, you really are. Yeah, it, They expect to have XYZ done. You don't do it. You're, you're stealing. You are. Uh, now, Princess... If she were just to go from the bath, brush, blow dry, uh, nails, and ear cleaning, then she would be charged probably roughly around fifty dollars, um, maybe even forty-five. Um, at her short hair, probably forty-five. But then if she got a full haircut, her haircut ranges about seventy to seventy-five. So can't this... help but kiss her. <laughs> so when you take a dog in and you're like oh my gosh why is it so expensive yep. to get my dog's haircut done every six weeks well this is why yeah if you take it to a reputable groomer this is why it costs so much because it takes time it does and, and you know what again you're watching what we're doing what i'm doing it really does matter every aspect of what this dog's looking like matters to me if it didn't i wouldn't put it on film obviously but this is what it's like. Every dog, whether it's small, medium, or large, this is what we're going through. And I, I think a lot of our customers, they've always asked the question, well, what do you do? You know, what, why did it turn out like this? Well, here's why. You know, your dog, it's being, it has affection. <laughs> we are having a, we're, we're having a moment together. A lot of people ask the question, Wow, my dog runs in here, wags his tail, and jumps up on you. Wait, why does he do that? Why does she do that? Here's why. This is the reason why. We're not giving this dog a rough time. This dog, it must feel great. I mean, think about going to the spa. This is what this is. Yeah, there's there's just a few minor inconveniences to the dogs that they really don't care after a while. But um, we had another great Pyrenees in not too long ago, Amy. And the lady, the owner, made it a point to call and say, wow, what did you guys do? She's so fluffy. She says, I've been taking Amy there for a long time, but she's never come home looking like this. And we just said, well, we're a little more experienced than some of the people in the past. And we just know how to really give a thorough cleaning. Uh, she goes, thank you so much. I am never going to let my dog get washed by anybody else but <laughs> you guys. And, and, you know, we'll refer her to this video because it gives her a, a real understanding of what really went on with hers. Um, you know, this this is the, the Great Pyrenees is a sheep guarding kind of dog. More of a farm type dog. Um, they, they are meant to be out in the field and they're meant to be working. They're meant to have something to do. On a regular basis. Right. Um, it says uh, the ancestry is believed to date back 10 to 11,000 years to dogs who originated in Asia Minor. Uh, his ancestors are uh, thought to have, been, have come from Pyrenees Mountains sometime around 3000 BC. They're the breed with developed to create a dog with um, that would aid shepherds. Huh. Yes, they, they have this natural instinct to gather and um, keep things together. Um, uh, some Great Pyrenees can be quite aggressive. Now, they're, they're known for a pretty mellow temperament. Uh, most of the Great Pyrenees I've ever groomed were pretty mellow. The working ones, 
they get a little more aggressive because they are meant to. They are meant to keep the flock safe. They are meant to keep the cattle safe. Some cattle, especially around here, uh, they're meant to get up and get things done, keep people safe, keep animals safe. Um, <clears throat> and those are the ones that typically come in to see us once a year during the summer to get stripped. Ah, yes, yes. It's unfortunate, but they don't bring them in as much. Princess and Amy, they both come in on a regular basis to keep their hair nice. The other ones, we shave them, we detick them, um, oh, deflee the them. It's it's horrible. I don't miss ticks. No, well, it's going to It's coming up, up here soon. soon. <laughs> um, at first, the Great Pyrenees was considered to be a dog owned by peasants. But in 1675, the Dauphin of Court of King Louis declared that the Great Pyrenees was the royal dog of France that prompted the French nobility to acquire Great Pyrenees and use them to guard estates. The first Great Pyrenees to be imported to North America went uh, to Newfoundland, Canada. There, the breed is attributed with creating the Lancer Newfoundlands after uh, crossbreeding between the Great Pyrenees and the Newfoundland. Throughout the 1800s, the breed gained popularity throughout England, Europe, and the United States. They are introduced into the St. Bernard breeding program in Switzerland in an effort to reestablish the number of dogs at a famous hospice where the St. Bernard originated. In the uh, Pyrenees homeland, however, the breed began to uh, deteriorate due to unscrupulous breeding practices. I think you've I've heard that so many different times over the... the... It's over, over breeding. It's like if you take a lab. After Marley and me came out, everybody wanted to get a lab. Oh, you gosh. Know, it, it was the thing to have. And it was so overbred that you started getting... Um, Labradors with very narrow faces, and they're not supposed to have that narrow face. Um, English bulldogs. It's it's crazy. It just it, that just happens. Now, as you can tell, and now I'm moving on to a dryer that does not actually you know blow off a lot of uh, strength. This is the one I like to use for the head. Yeah, our canine blow dryer that's there. It's a single motor, uh-huh. and <clears throat> it has a high and a low setting. Not much difference between the two. No, no, not at all. (laughs) But if you remove the actual nozzle that forces the air out through a smaller hole, you have a very light blowing dryer, kind of like what it would be for a human hair dryer. Right. And as you can tell now, I have that going around her neck. So she's prepared now for this. And as you can tell with the lead that's on her, you can see how loose that is. It's almost like she's just sitting there. She she knows it's there, but it's obviously just kind of bleh. Right and there. then right now this dryer is just now being started up for the first time in about an hour probably. Oh, probably longer. I think she was so my first of the day. So it's nice and cool. It's barely blowing. Uh, so you're able to put the nozzle very close to the skin without yep. having issues. As the motor keeps going, uh, the warmer it gets. And you notice the nozzle come away from the skin a little bit further. Yeah, she won't. It, it never really did get warm because this was my first dog of the day. Well, but, that and the hoodie was on for a long time. Yes. That hoodie was soaking wet once she took it off. But as you can tell, that nozzle is not going near her face. Not, you know, there will be a time where I'm going to have to, you know, work with her muzzle. But there's not a shot where she's going to have it in her eyes, you know, pressed up against her face. I've seen this in the past where groomers will actually put the nozzle, and I'm not talking about like something like this. I'm talking about high velocity pressed right up in the face and you almost kind of have that cartoon dog where the lips are I'm smacking moving, yeah. yeah you see nothing but their canines all of a sudden are their their eyeballs, eyeballs yeah are exposed in their... and that's real i've actually we've seen, seen this it. yeah you know, i've i've pulled dryers away from somebody and and told them get the heck out you know go get the manager there goes another kiss boy i i didn't realize how much i just kind of love that dog but as you can tell you know we're Again, you can tell by the demeanor of Princess. This is not something that's uncomfortable. If it was uncomfortable, she'd be gone. Making sure that, you know, right there at the Aussie put, I want to make sure I get all that area. I want to make sure I go just a little bit higher. I want to make sure that her head's going to get dry. And I'm checking every time, making sure everything is, is exactly the way I want it. I'm paying attention the entire time, making yeah. sure I'm getting her ears dry. 
making sure I close the ear canal again because now I'm blowing air in that area. I want to make sure that I'm not going to blow any water in there. Or even just regular air can hurt the, um, that too. the eardrum. Um, it's important to make sure that the ears get relatively dry before putting the kennel because some dogs, they hide their heads from the actual kennel dryers. Yeah. Um, there's some dogs that have been to believe to not use kennel dryers on. And then there's some places that say, oh, no, that's not true. Um, it depends on what rules that your groomer follows. Um, so sometimes when the dogs hide their heads, it's like <laughs> darn near I wanna, impossible. I just want to give her a hug. <laughs> Reach through the camera. Reach through the video. It, 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 this is actually really weird watching a video. Sitting here watching this at work and talking about it. This is just really strange. If I didn't have such bad ADD, I would wear one while grooming and doing the haircut, but I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, as you can tell, you know, some of you may be going, is this all the video is going to be? Yeah, this is what the video is. It's it's in-depth of showing what we're doing. That way you guys get an idea. Maybe you even appreciate what the <laughs> podcast is all about. Well, I've always had a motto that I have nothing to hide. True. There is absolutely nothing that I do I'm going to hide. Um, <clears throat> some groomers, if there's a window leading into their grooming salon, they'll cover it with a towel so people can't see in. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of annoying if the dog sees a person and then wants to get to that said person outside. Now, as you can tell, I'm, I'm finished with her head. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. That was as much as I want to do. I don't want to actually overdo her. So... There's always that fine line. Her face is, you can see how she's dry. You don't want to overdo her. You don't want that, that nozzle pressed in her face. That's my biggest concern with every dog. I want to make sure that their experience is as gentle as possible. Now, we're going on to brushing. Okay, by brushing, we'll help separate the, fo the hair follicles so that the kennel drying is quicker. <clears throat> but what I was saying earlier is that um, groomers who have something to hide that's not a good idea if they're trying to get the dog to pay attention to what they're doing versus <laughs> the person outside that's one thing but if they are trying to hide from an owner or from people seeing what they're doing there's something wrong True. we are transparent you see what we do you will you can see, you can watch um, our window in our grooming salon has a um, a curtain thing that you can see in, but you can't really see out. There's a good reason for that. So the dogs don't freak out that, hey, my mom's watching me. As long as they're quiet, the owner's quiet, the dogs won't know that they're there. And then they can continue seeing what we're doing. She was a wonderful dog. It's always nice to, to see her come in. It's always nice to see all of our dogs come in. Some dogs, just you, you're just so happy to see them. I mean, when I see Zega come in, oh my gosh, light up. I mean, and we're talking a lot of work. And if you notice here too, Chris is using a different type of slicker brush than what it was in the bathing room. Um, this, in the bathtub. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It's a little bit odd. This one is my holy grail of slicker brushes. I've mentioned this in prior um, podcast episodes. Yep. Uh, this is the one that has a double-sided uh, one's the actual bent bristled slicker. The other one has um, bristles just pointing up. And that helps with getting a lot of undercoat out or for dogs with sensitive skin. And you know what's nice about it? Now, I don't know how you feel. I always like when I'm brushing. If I'm brushing and for some reason I feel a patch that's still wet, it gives me an opportunity to go, oh, that's a little square that I need to go back and actually work on. Right. That does happen quite a lot. So then... This whole process actually works in two different ways. I'm finding out how dry this dog is, which this dog should be dry. So I'm looking at it going, is this dog dry? Is there anything I need to do? Is there a spot that I want to actually touch up on? Did See, I there's something, something else I do differently than you do. Yeah. I start at the tip of the tail and I work up. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, kind of like when we brush Claire's hair, you start at the tips and work up. And see, I, I like the I like the fact that we are different in some areas. Mm -hmm. I do like it. It's you know, it, it is a, it is still you know, like I said at the opening of this, it is a little jarring having you watch my work <laughs> because you've been doing it for so long. But what's else you know, what's nice about it is that you do have your own style. 
and what's nice is I have my own style. And as you can tell, you can see that there's there's definitely some of her fur in that uh, slicker. There was a lot of fur to clean up after that. But it was worth it. She's so fluffy. Yes. Another reason why you want to make sure that this dog is dried, washed properly. You can go back to the beginning of this video. You can see her color wasn't like that when a we started. A little dingy. Yep. Time to flip her. <laughs> She's like, I'm done, right? No, baby, you're not done. <laughs> Come on. She no. was she was like no I'm done. <laughs> She's like no come on. So I actually realized okay you didn't want to she didn't want to move at that point. So when a dog doesn't want to move, there's one one thing you can do. You, well that's me playing with her of course. I just can't you see that this is the problem. This is why sometimes I take longer because I'm well, too busy playing with them. That's the thing. I have made it very obvious on Facebook on our podcast. I am not going to get your one dog done, washed, blow-dried, and cut in one hour. Huh. I'm not going to get it done in an hour and a half. <laughs> See that now? I want more playtime. I want more playtime. And this is the reason why. You have some groomers are saying, we're going to get your dog out in an hour and a half, an hour and a half time. Well, that's not... I'm sorry. You can't get playtime in with everything else. You really can't. It's not going to happen. You really can't. Um, Our, now, with... That we're we're pretty much done with this episode, so I hope you guys all enjoyed Princess the Great Pyrenees, and tune in next week. You'll you'll see it posted. I'll we'll be putting in a different breed of dog in. We'll be doing a whole different commentary, pretty much the same thing, but different different aspects, mm -hmm. which is really entertaining. And actually, the next one should have two dogs yep. in that one. All right, folks. Well, that concludes episode one of our mini series tune in next week and hopefully you guys are listening to us on the podcast we will be right back for another episode next week have a great time have a pet-tastic week we had cats now breaking into the studio <laughs> um, all right folks hope you enjoyed bye-bye